stick around and we'll get right to it. There was two things in particular about these batteries that I wanted to check out. First, they list these as IP67 rated on the Amazon listing. And second, it says at least on one of them in the Amazon listing that it's got low temp charge protection, which is kind of interesting for batteries at this level. Usually you only see that in a 100 amp hour or larger battery, and often a lot of those don't include this. So that was two key points that I wanted to check out. XZNY sent me two different versions of this battery to take a look at. They sent me an 18 amp hour version and a 12 amp hour version. The 18 amp hour version measures 6 inches long, 4 inches wide, and 3.75 inches tall. It has 256 watt hours available to us. It provides continuous 20 amp discharge and 40 amps for up to 5 seconds. The BMS offers us the standard protections against overcharge, overdischarge, short circuit, and over temp. And again, it includes that low temp charging protection. They also offer something that you don't see very often, and that's a three year no hassle return policy. Another interesting spec that they claim on the Amazon site is you can do unlimited parallel connections and up to four series connections with these batteries. Now the 12 amp hour version measures six inches long, two and a half inches wide, and 3.75 inches tall. And it gives us 153.6 watt hours that's available to us. The 12 amp hour version will give us 10 amps continuously or 20 amps for at least five seconds. Now for both of these batteries, I set the test parameters to draw three amps per hour from the batteries. And I do realize that that varies a little bit from the rated normal capacity tests. But as radio operators, I find that we're going to probably draw somewhere in that three to five amp hour range, depending on exactly what your activity is and how hard you're using that battery. So I was going for more real world numbers. So from the 12 amp hour version of this battery, I was able to draw 11.86 amp hours before depleting the battery. Using the same criteria for the 18 amp hour test, I was able to draw 17.58 amp hours from the battery. So neither one of these batteries drew full capacity, but I was probably pushing them a little bit harder than the normal test standards, trying to simulate real world conditions. Next, I wanted to test the low temp charge protection, but I didn't want to do that in a destructive manner, tearing the batteries apart and hunting that sensor. So I put the batteries in the freezer overnight. I left this in the freezer overnight and as you can see hopefully it is somewhere around 19 to 20 degrees. Now this light is green if it charges the battery this light will go red. I'll give that a passing grade. Let's do the same test again this time with the 12 amp hour version. Uh, looks like about 16 degrees on that temperature. Let's go ahead and try to plug it up. Maybe if the connector will work. There we go. And you can see that that is still green. So low temp protection is definitely working in both of these batteries. Now I was very pleasantly surprised to see that low temp charge protection put into both versions of this battery. The last test, however, is the IP67 rating test. Now, I kind of got conflicting information because the Amazon site tells you that it's IP67 rating. However, the battery specifically says on it, or it's stamped on the side, to avoid water. So I wanted to see which of these was correct. Now, just in case you're unfamiliar with IP ratings, let's go ahead and head over to Wikipedia and take a quick peek. You can see right here, looking at the first digit, we've got a rating of 6, and that tells us that it is dust tight. No ingress of dust, complete protection against contact. 
and it says that a vacuum must be applied and the test duration is up to eight hours based on airflow. The one that's more interesting though is the second digit, uh, which you can see right here is liquid ingress protection. So let's go take a look at that number seven rating. Right here, you can see the number seven rating says immersion up to one meter, three feet, three inches of depth. And the test duration is 30 minutes. Let's see what the truth of this matter really is. All right, if you're going to claim it's waterproof, you better be right. As you can see, we've got 13.47 volts on the battery. We're about to submerge it in roughly four gallons of water. We'll leave it there for 10 minutes. And then we'll see what happens. Wait a minute, did you guys catch that? Let's rewind and take a closer look. The video says it all. There are clearly air bubbles coming out of that battery, which means only one thing. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and put the probes on here and let you see that I am reading 13.41 volts after it was submerged in water. What you're not going to be able to see on this video is when I shake the battery, I can literally hear water inside the battery. There's no way I'm going to trust this thing again. So would I recommend these batteries? Well, I definitely wouldn't recommend submerging them in a bucket of water. They don't seem to hold up very well. However, as a low-cost option, I think these batteries would be great. So I'll leave a link to those down in the description below if you're interested. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.